Hey guys, what's up? Rambo here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a XP run on Dead Ops Arcade 3. So an XP run is basically what it sounds like, just playing for XP. So we're in the postseason of Cold War. I'm currently level 1478 with a little bit of progression, but we'll just round down 1478 even. We'll see how many levels we gain in this XP run with an XP token popped. So the max level for the postseason is 2500. Ever since Warzone 2 was introduced, they upped the level cap to 2500. You pretty much have an eternity to get it. So we'll be playing the first person solo playlist there, all right? So top down is going to be a bit slower since you run slower. FPS, you're able to sprint, take more hits, etc. So we're going to play FPS solo, and we're going to pop a 15 minute token right before the match is about to begin. So you can pop more if you want, but in order for this XP uh, run to be efficient and maximized, uh, you could do a 15 minute token and kind of speed run through the wild. So here we are on round one. So these first four rounds are essentially time based, but you can speed them up a little bit by dropping a nuke towards the end of the round. So around 30 seconds into the round, you could drop a nuke or you could look at your mini map and see when they stop spawning. Sometimes they kind of troll you. It looks like they're stop, uh, they're going to stop spawning and then they start spawning again. So it's just a matter of getting the timing right and playing it a few times. But if you don't hit the nuke at the right time, it's not really going to cost you too much. Uh, it's just uh, a few seconds here and a few seconds there. Also, it's helpful to speed boost at the end of rounds through the doors. I didn't do it that round because the door was kind of close, but you basically get at least one boost per round. You start with two, but you, there's no harm in going down to one per round here in the first four. It is worth noting that XP earned on Cold War through DOA applies to other modes in Cold War, such as multiplayer and zombies, and also applies to Vanguard and Warzone 1.0, and I think MW19 as well. So there's cross progression with those games, just not any of the newer CODs starting with MW2 and going forward. Now for the wild run coming up here in a bit, you're not going to do it as efficiently as me unless you have some experience. But it's not something that's very difficult in my opinion. So if you learn the routes, you know where the keys are, you know where the zombie heads could appear, where the mini bosses are, etc. After a few attempts, I think you'll get it down and it'll be more efficient as you keep practicing, right? There is an alternate DOA XP method that's even better than this one. And way more low effort, like I think even a dog could do it. But I'm kind of working out some of the nooks and crannies of it. I don't want to release a video on it until I have like the most efficient way of doing it. And even when I do upload it, like it'd be so good that <laughs> low key, like they might patch it like two years later. But anyways, we're going to skip ahead here in, in Island. Nobody wants to watch Island, I don't think. This nuke you don't get back, but it's, it's worth dropping anyways. Save a few seconds. Then you're forced to watch this cutscene. We're going to skip ahead. And here we are, we just hit the portal to the wild. So this is where the real XP making opportunities begin. This should be around three, three and a half minutes into your run when you enter the wild. Uh, the weapon box there at the start is sometimes helpful if it's a good purple weapon. This cage you don't want to enter unless the arcade is there. So I'm going to skip the cage, not even bother opening it or boosting on the lift with the shortcut if you know that. But uh, I will get that key on the lift. You don't really need too many keys for an XP run. Sometimes getting good keys at the beginning helps in terms of saving time later. You don't got to get the lava keys by the third dungeon. But just simple maneuvers here, going around and shooting these heads here at the beginning. Also shooting the baskets is helpful for getting the Furious Feet uh, pickup, which lasts 25 seconds. And you want to make sure you check for arcades too. So I'm going to check the bushes here for an arcade machine. And I see there's one, so I'm going to hit it. So FPS arcades are kind of a nightmare, especially the, the bigger ones with uh, higher timers. This one I kind of like for XP. It's kind of pretty simple. And you're in and you're out sort of thing. So right here we have two heads. And we're going to get a pair of Furious boots here. You don't got to worry about grabbing gems or a multiplier. This is not a score run. That would be a separate video that maybe I make at some point, like the most efficient score route in the wild for those going for the 1 billion. But over here, we got six zombie heads and the 1000 XP for exiting. In what, a little over 30 seconds? That's pretty, pretty decent. So the deadly dungeons, we're going to drop into this one, but you pretty much, for a 15 minute XP token, you should only drop into one dungeon. 
And over here, I have like lots of uh, hallways in the minimap, so I'm not gonna bother exploring. You'll only explore if the exit ladder is kind of close, because that's some XP, and also if you have a lot of square rooms with either Nosferatus or regular zombie heads. Of course, a Margra doesn't hurt either if you get a, uh, a Friendship Stone or a Firepower Stone or uh, a Feet Stone that could help your XP run quite a bit. Now we just entered the Abandoned Temple. I recommend the Temple because you get four Speed Boosts right here. This could help you kind of save time later on. You're only spending a few seconds in there uh, despite the loading. And we're going to keep pushing our way forward. There's always going to be a little variation with the XP runs, but the end result is going to be similar, as I'll show later, in terms of the XP gained from various runs. There's a little speed boost trick you could do here to save some time. I kind of got launched with these baskets, which I wasn't trying to do exactly, but while I was here, I said, let me shoot this head. It's going to be very important, and I'll mention this a few times more, to shoot the heads when you're up close next to them. Because otherwise you're only going to get 100 XP for an inactive spawner. And there's a few heads that are problematic like that, even if you're kind of close to them. So that weapon box is helpful to open. Sometimes you might get a shotgun, which uh, obliterates the six arm guy. But I get a purple RPD. I'm going to grab five chickens. No point, no point in grabbing six of them. You can only carry five, usually. Make sure that my chickens are lined up. I kind of have like a nightmare situation here where like the, the spikes hit me, I'm absolute, but I have three speed boosts to my name, so I'm just going to use it and, and play it safe here. There's no point in taking a death. I mean, if you take a death, it's not the end of the world, but you're just kind of wasting time while you're reviving for a few seconds. So right there, so I got a death machine pickup, going to blast this fool. And then I'm going to make my way towards the guaranteed key spawn in a second. Oh, I'm going for this head and the, and the flashlight. Can't turn down the flashlight ever. So right over here is the guaranteed key. Boost into the corner. And you get five chickens as well. So this is going to be helpful for killing this six arm guy. So when I drop here, I like to open the weapon box and then enter the kaboom room. Saves you a couple seconds in waiting for the weapons. Just quickly grab nine nukes, four on the side, four on the other side. And then I get these weapons that are here. Again, there's a little bit of variance. If you have shotguns, you're obviously going to kill this guy quicker than if you have uh, a crossbow or a rocket launcher. But regardless, worth killing these fools, although sometimes they don't spawn. So no point in trying to trigger them to spawn if they don't want to spawn. You're just going to waste time doing that. If you didn't enter the first dungeon, I would recommend dropping into the second one here. But I'm going to skip it. I don't want to waste too much time. The dungeons, you can't really afford to explore with a 15-minute token. If you're doing a 30-minute token and you're playing co-op, then I would recommend going through the dungeons, especially since there's more rooms and more players to take out the heads and donations as well. But just grab the death machines there, take out the elephant real quick with the chickens as well, if you still have them. No point in entering the doom buggy. It's going to take away your primary weapon. I kind of want to keep the death machine here, shoot these heads. So these heads over here are kind of problematic. Uh, the, the bat spawner coming up. If you shoot them while underwater, it's only going to count as 100 XP. So make sure you get up close and personal. Boom, 350 XP. Again, remember you have nine nukes at this point if you just hit the kaboom room. So no point in dying to this elephant. Be careful. Blast them. These mini bosses are also good to kill because they usually drop a pair of boots. Again, that lasts 25 seconds. So that's going to help you progress. Check on that side for a key. There's no key, so I'm not going to bother opening the chests. I'm going to be careful here with the wardens. Drop a nuke. Make sure they don't slam me because I'm damaged. And we're just going to speed run through this side. Drop a nuke. Run through the lava. Not going to take the spring pad. Just going to jump up on this rock and then take the final spring pad. It's going to save you a couple seconds. And then take the final spring pad and, and boost over to this side. I'm kind of weak here. I, I probably should have dropped a nuke just just in case I got fireballed, but I was kind of using my audio cues to see if there was a fireball coming. There wasn't. I'm good. Going to boost across here. Don't want to mess with these wardens. And now we're doing pretty good in time. A little over 10 minutes into the run, I believe. The real money maker here is Akari. Now I'm going to do a little trick here where I just dive into the lava, hop on the invisible plank, and kind of run across. So I don't want to deal with any of the lifts or anything like that. I don't want to wait for them. I'm just diving into the lava and using two nukes. 
uh, to get in. Sometimes you could even do it with one nuke, but I'm going to err on the side of caution here and use two. The whole lava side with the keys, you probably don't even need to explore if you have a decent number of keys, but right there I kind of needed a few. The six arm guy at the beginning of Akari, I wouldn't bother shooting him unless you have a death machine or a shotgun at the beginning. Uh, so you might get one from those boxes that you shoot. And there's two guaranteed chickens, so I recommend grabbing those regardless. If you have a purple shotgun and many chickens, or even a purple death machine and many chickens, you could crash the game while shooting the six-arm guy, so be careful of that, especially on co-op, where that's kind of more possible as an outcome. Uh, I'm exploring this top path here. I end up getting a boost and a key, which is kind of decent, but maybe in hindsight a bit of a waste of time going up there, especially since I kind of missed a jump at some point. But just over here, shoot these Nosferatus. If you're playing the FPS playlist, you could actually crouch under the flogger, unlike in top down. Top down when you grab the FPS drop, I should clarify. And just shoot these heads. This head over here, this crawler, you gotta make sure you're close to it if you want the XP. Usually it's inactive. Make your way over here, afterlife spawners. So what I do is a little different than a traditional run here for an XP run. So what I'll do is I'll open the Margra room and instead of trapping them behind the chest, that's kind of like a safe route. Like that's kind of a waste of time. Instead of trapping them behind the chest, I'm going to open the Margra room and kind of make a dash for the uh, death machines, even though I'm like swimming at a very slow <laughs> pace right there. going to make a dash for the death machines and kind of blast this fool, use a nuke here, make sure he doesn't slap me. Because uh, if he slaps me at this point, I'm going to die even FPS since I'm damaged. And we're going to light him up with a purple shotgun. So at this point, we still have a regular red shotgun, which is going to go to a regular. But I'm going to take the spring pad, grab the three chickens, shoot the baskets, maybe something decent in there. And at this point, we're going to quickly check the Margaret room. You probably don't even have to check it, to be honest. But, I mean, even little things like a, like a speed boost are helpful. They could save you a few seconds later on. So two boosts and a key, not bad. But if there's three pieces of silver, then you kind of feel like a fool for going there, right? So I kind of have good timing here with the jump pads by the lava here. Jump on the first one. Second one is ready. And we're ready to go to the werewolf. This first afterlife spawner, make sure you land before you shoot it. That's another inactive spawner usually. That gives you 100 XP. And then we're just going to sort of light up the werewolf here. Don't be afraid to use some nukes. Make sure you have a couple pieces at this point. And we're going to shoot these heads. Make sure we get kind of close to them because they kind of are again sometimes inactive if you shoot them from too far away. Four keys, we're going to spend them all on the chest there. If you're going for score, that's some nice score. I guess you could stick around for, you know, four key chests of score. We're going <laughs> to pick up the key at the end there and also shoot these heads over yonder. At this point, I'm looking at my timer and I know we're around like 13, 14 minutes into the uh, XP run. So instead of going up the volcano, which usually takes a lot of time unless you kind of hit the speed boost up the volcano, I'm going to forego any heads there. It's not really great XP, so we're just going to backtrack, use a couple boosts, and hit the teleport. Teleporter is massive XP, all right? 3,500 XP with uh, double XP, and then we're also going to hit that door. We have time to open the door after we hit the teleporter if we have a lone key. And then also some good XP this round. This is a challenge round. Round 5 is a gladiator challenge round. So you get XP for completing the round, and then an, an additional 1,000 XP since it's a challenge round. So we're trying to sneak this in before the 15 minutes, which is always helpful. So this is pretty good for XP, the UA3, wild with uh, t tokens popped. With a 15-minute token popped and playing for just 15 minutes, nothing more, I'm able to get a little bit over two levels. So two levels and a fifth of a level, perhaps. In co-op, it could be a little more efficient sometimes with donations and things of that nature. So this is me at the end of the run, level 1480 and change. At the beginning, I was pretty much 1478 flat. And this is a previous run where I'm 1470 at the beginning. Then I finish round five, I'm 1472 and change. So again, pretty much the identical XP. I might have done things a little differently in that run, might have killed an extra mini boss, might have went through a dungeon, might have, you know, uh, skipped a couple heads in a certain part. Might, I had a different slideways, different keys, but again, the end result is around the same two levels and change. 
This is another example where, again, 1472 and change is what I went into an XP run with. By the time I finished round five, I went up to 1474 and a little more, almost halfway. So again, those are three runs, three straight runs that I did where two levels and change was the end result, even though I had different keys, different slideways, different you know weapons from weapon boxes. So again, the RNG kind of levels out throughout the entire run. Don't be complaining, Rambo, you get too many keys, you get too many RP, uh, you know, uh, death machine. I don't want to hear it. Anyways, take it easy, fellas.